Okay, Raina, this one fired me up. A girl sending my boyfriend selfies of her in a bikini asking, should I post this on Instagram? Of Girls Gotta Eat. Coming to you from our reopened studio, second week. I feel so happy. We're here. <laughs> Where's Azul? We, this is why people tune in. Azul. Oh, now you're just leaving. Okay. Azul, we bought you a bed. Come on. Here we go. Just sit between us. Yeah. Giving us everything. <laughs> Full yoga session. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Azul invented Dower Dog. He's really strutting. I know. He's looking at that thing. He's like, I know you want me up on it. I'm not doing it. I know. I know. He's really trolling us. So I didn't, I have this giant water bottle. This, everybody's all about their Stanley. I'm about that swell life. I have mm-hmm. been. So they just put these out. This is kind of their answer to the Stanley. And I love it so much more. Raina, I had it sitting on my, ca- you know, those big couch arms. Mm-hmm. And my on my couch, which are great, and they're flat, and I can put like a mug on there so easily, or my laptop, or whatever. I put this on there, and I thought it was. I had the top open. I was like drinking out of it, watching a movie the other night. It was full, forty ounces. It spilled on me and all over my couch. <laughs> Why I did you put it there? Scr- I thought it. Well, it's like I put mugs and drinks on the edge of the couch all the time. It's like a flat surface, but this is like a little rounded. You dumped a gallon of water on yourself. A, yeah, forty ounces. The way that. <laughs> and I, I was on the phone I was on the phone with Spark Lies and I screamed I know I, we were on FaceTime so he watched it happen in real time he's so lucky I was <laughs> you, do you know you get like hit with water you don't know that's happening like the other time I can compare this to was I was on a plane laid back watching a movie why am I always watching a movie and I think I told you this that flight attendant she tripped so forcefully spilled the guys next to me entire ginger ale on my body <laughs> Mid flight, three hours in, three hours to go, watching a movie, just just doused. I don't like when you're not ready and you get hit with liquid. It's just you know I can't stand a problem I can't solve, and it's just like what are you gonna do about it? No, so I just said luckily I sat. I have my couch is big enough. I sat on the other side. It took full twenty four hours to dry. He is so lucky he got to see this. When I so jealous. When I tell you there was a puddle. And then I was like almost in tears. You know, you're just like, I'm soaked. I you have a, no I, recourse. You're gonna punch the you're gonna punch I, the mug. I had the fireplace going. I had this cozy night. I had to change. <laughs> I just stood in my kitchen and changed. He was like, and then we're on FaceTime. Was he, he was he like, laughing? Yes. Were you I laughing? mean I was laughing, but like upset. Yeah. And you then can't... we're on FaceTime and I'm changing. He's like, show me your pussy right now. <laughs> I was like, don't, not right like, now. It's wet for different not reasons. Right so. yes, I'm, I'm, show me your wet pussy right now. I was like, not now. Yeah, this isn't because of you. Poor Azul. That's where he used to like to curl up. He just could. That he was so just so like, much serves you right. My mom's a fucking idiot. Around with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here we are. Here we are. Let's talk about our partners that are not water bottles. Okay. Big shout out to Helix Sleep. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash GGE and use code HELIXPARTNER20. Yes, and big thanks to Skims for supporting our show. Shop the Skims t-shirt shop at skims.com. I'm wearing one. Now available in sizes extra, extra small to 4X. Be sure to let them know we sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop-down menu. And thanks to Daily Harvest for supporting Girls Gotta Eat. Get yummy smoothies that are ready in minutes without shopping and prepping. Go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping for a limited time only. I have that shirt. I have that exact shirt. I got yeah. it in a medium. It's so soft. It's the soft. I got it in a medium. <laughs> and I, I love Josh. <laughs> but I usually wear a... Crazy sm- the same. I'm wearing a... I'm wearing a that's, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about bras later. We are here in the studio. We have Anna with us here from New York, our editor, and Tessa, and Azul allegedly may or may not be in the frame as we speak, and we're just here full house today. I know. I feel so emotional about it. It's just been a really good couple weeks. We just... 
we released the tour last week. Yeah. And you guys just, I feel very emotional seeing all the stories about everybody like buying tickets. I know. And to the new markets. Yeah. So you guys can get tickets now to our No Crumbs tour, which is going to be this fall and winter. And all the dates are available now for tickets. And we have like new cities that we've never been to before, like Portland, Maine and Las Vegas and Madison, Wisconsin. And we're just so excited to see you guys. So thank you for getting those tickets. Girls got to com. Yeah. I'm just, I'm excited. It's, just, it's a good, it's a good week. Actually, right now, today, we just got back from Hawaii. So we'll talk about it next oh, week. Oh, as we, yeah, we haven't gone yet. But like, as we record, My we will have just trip. gotten back from Hawaii our first time. Yeah, we've never been. So I'm like really, really excited. April just has a lot of good stuff coming up for us. So we'll let you guys know. I wanted to talk about something so that I. I thought was so crazy. Okay. <laughs> so... I go to get my laser hair removal last week (laughs) (laughs) and the girl that's she's asking me a lot of questions and it's okay I'm happy to chat but it was a lot to the point where I started to feel like maybe she knew the podcast okay and wanted to hear about my life from me and maybe wanted to fact check or something like she's like episode so how'd you meet your boyfriend like Like, a personal episode yes she wanted her own personal episode she wanted her own patreon so she's asking me all these questions and again like I'm happy to chat with like with people that are doing where are you going yeah exactly so she's asking like a lot a lot of questions it was starting to feel not invasive not as invasive as the treatment itself when they're pulling your pussy lips to the side to laser them but it was like chatty for what's happening for what's happening yeah and I told her about the sex book company (laughs) and then I told her I had a podcast and she goes so what's the name of the podcast and she's mid laser in my pussy and I said girls gotta eat she goes wait (laughs) she goes this other girl <laughs> yesterday has that podcast, I think. And I go, oh, my God. And then I have memory unlocked that you were going the day before. We tried to go the same day, we but we try. couldn't get the same appointment. So because we were going to carpool since now we have to go to West Hollywood. We, and we, we live near each other now. And so I was like, oh, my God. Yes, Raina was in here yesterday. So the fact that this woman saw both of our pussies in two days. Do you what? OK, I want to know what was going on in her mind where she's like. I just like the mental gymnastics of like, what is she even saying? Somebody yesterday told me they owned that no, podcast. No, she's probably like, am I having a stroke? Like, am I good? Yeah. Like she, she, when she asked me about when she was in my vagina, asking me the same <laughs> questions, just so chatty. I mean, so many questions, but she's like spreading my labia open. I was like, this is a lot. I didn't yeah. say like, I co-host it with somebody. I don't think I offered that information. I just like wanted to zoom right past it. She's like, what's it about? I told her. And like, then we were done down there. And I was, I didn't, I don't think I told her I co-host it with somebody. So she probably was like, what are you saying? You own that podcast. My frame of mind was when I said girls got to eat, then she was going to fess up. And then she was going to be like, okay. Cause she goes, (gasps) and I'm like, here we go. She's going to admit that she's known who I am this whole time. But she couldn't say it because oh, of like, I don't uh-huh. know, HIPAA or whatever. And so <laughs> and then for her to go, wait, this other girl. And then I remembered I laughed so hard. And then I went to lunch with Andrew, Colin and Brenna afterwards. And I was like, you think she's a fan now? He was like, she's either a fan now or she's not. <laughs> she saw y'all's pussies. She, regardless, she made a decision no matter what. That is so funny. Can you imagine to start listening and you're like, I've seen both of their inside of their pussies. That's how you start your girl's going to eat journey is knowing what my butthole looks like. So I think about this all the time when I get lasered, like anything like going on down there. If you listen to the podcast, if you are the biggest lifelong fan, you've come to every single show. Thank you. But I don't want to know. I want to live in this land that you have been inside of my pussy, my butthole. I'm I'm laying on the side, lifting a butt cheek up so you can laser it. I need to live in a land that you have no idea who I am. Right. Yes. Because you lay on your side and you lift your butt cheek. But it used to be happy baby when I would get waxes. And it was always my fear that we would do the whole procedure and they would be walking out of the room and be like, by the way, I'm a huge fan. That's the worst ever. I think about it all the time. I think about it constantly. And then they just go tell all their friends. Like, do they go to dinner after where they can have drinks with their girlfriends? Like, I saw Raina and Ashley with buttholes. No, but it's funny. Ashley talks about how clean her butthole is. Uh uh-uh, uh, it's not. What Raina, she- stop. That's a huge fear of mine. She- it's on Reddit. <laughs> That your butthole's dirty? Like, what if she was like balled up toilet paper in there and she like told That's her- a you problem. That- <laughs> You're always talking about that. No, it is it is it so funny. You. You're not immune. If she starts to be a podcast fan and then her friends are like, so how'd you hear about this podcast? <laughs> She's like, well, you'll never believe this. But I saw both of the host pussies two days in a row and I started to listen. <laughs> funny story. You'll never believe it. <laughs> 
I think that girl heard you say girls gotta eat and she was like, I have been in this small room with no windows for too long Well, because I'm hearing things. But and, and then on top of the sex toy company because she goes, wait, how many people have a sex toy company and a podcast? <laughs> like, you know, she was just yes. like, I'm having a full blown yeah, I deja don't... vu experience. You know what would be so funny if she was like, wow, your pussy's a lot bigger than your ho- co-host. I would... Do you think that she went out and just compared the two? It's I fine. Would. I'm a lot bigger than you. I'm sure. I would. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's against regulations for her to like go out to drinks with friends and talk about I it? I have no idea. I mean, if I saw a celebrity's pussy, I would never stop talking about it. I would start every conversation. What with if we it. all of a sudden start noticing like a troll account? It's like big pussy lips under like all of our Instagram, <laughs> all or it's like dirty it. booty hole. And there was an extra girl in that room too. Two people saw our pussies that day. One girl was training. One girl was. Tra- <laughs> Listen, they did ask Raina and I both if we would let the trainee do it. And I wanted to be respectful. I didn't think that they went about it in the best way. I think they put me on the spot. Yeah, they put me on the spot too. But I said, she can do my legs, but I'd prefer the non-trainee to do my pussy lips. Like, I don't know. But I let her, she did my legs. So I go, so how many times have you done it? She said a She said days. like, like three times and I was like no, it's oh. not listen I, I have some thoughts on it but I like where I'm going and like that whatever their process is they do a great job yeah we so, love it couldn't be yeah. nicer in Atlanta Sweet Peach like a trainee you would get free sugar mm-hmm. you know what I mean like you would know going in that you were with yeah an undergrad <laughs> And to be fair, there's another person standing next to her, like <laughs> yes. plugging the things into the machine. Like, there's not much she could do to really hurt it's not, me. It's, 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 it's literally like the it. settings thing. It's it's like way, actually probably way easier than a wax training wise. Actually, definitely. Yes. All, yeah, yeah. So I let her have at it with my underarms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she got my legs in there. Long legs. A lot of training on these legs. I know. Really long legs. I have only had three sessions, and I feel like I don't really have much hair left. Is that normal? They said everybody's different, but you do have like finer hair. Yeah. I noticed that it took the like inner labia a lot. Like that's more hormonal. So like inside the lips? Yeah, your li- the lips. Okay. So like after three sessions, I noticed I hardly have any hair on like the top and the sides, but there was still more in that, like those inner lips. So remember I was like, is it weird if I ask them to just get in there more? Well, But they said- just said it's more hormonal. There's more hair. The hair grows differently there. She gave me a different excuse. She said that the hair... <laughs> You guys, why are we blowing the whistle on this laser place? What is this expose? <laughs> she told me that the hair there is so light that the laser can't really get to it. And the uh, the hair up top that it's probably like more of a dirty blonde than like a more wispier blonde. Whatever. They're doing a great job. Yeah. They're I don't can, care what they tell me. Just get it out of here. That was the funniest experience. Okay. So I wanted to let you guys in on something that we were like just laughing about. And now you'll notice it. I just want you guys to be like in on the joke. So we recurated the Instagram feed and every Every week, Ashley like picks the clips and she titles them. And so there's always like a title on mine and a title on Ashley's, obviously. And I started to feel like there is a real disparity between the titles on my Instagram clips and the titles on Ashley. And there was like a few and I was like, I don't love this. And then I started to pattern. I was like, this is actually hilarious. So I would like to read you an example of what I'm talking about. So by the way, guys, Raina is in charge of this company, too. And at any time she can change a title. She approves everything, too. Listen, they all go through you, too. I approve stuff, but this is what you cowboy. You're in charge of this part of stuff. So I'm going to be like, not this. Yes. Obviously, I could be like, I don't like this. Change it. But I think it's funny now. Let me read you the titles on Ashley's posts. Ring drama. Tips for long distance relationships. Prom gate. Girlfriend experience, first date fails, boyfriend fit, mocktails, nail trends. Just like normal sweet girl stuff. You're also leaving some out to fit your narrative. There's nothing really all that salacious on yours. Okay. Mine, littering, single life, cum preferences, (laughs) poor things, shopping on drugs, hot sex, sexy ways to spit, never looked uglier and shot a deer on a date. I think those sound very intriguing I and spicy. I think I sound like I party. Yeah. <laughs> I sound fun, but I, you were like, I get it, I'm boring. I don't feel like that. Oh no, I don't think I'm boring at all. It's just, the, these are the clips and by the way, <laughs> never looked uglier. We ran it by you. We we had you double approve it because I'm like, Raina, do you want your big face and do you want to say never looked uglier? And you were like, that's hilarious. I thought I looked cute in that photo. That's why I thought it was funny. I think this is so funny. Mine is just like, Sex and drugs and guns. <laughs> <laughs> Not the guns. And also, it kind of doesn't always correlate to who the star of the exactly. clip is. Exactly. That we, so that we just, alternate. We just ping pong. So yeah. it just happens to land on me every time that's the clip. So yeah, here's another good one of you. Lazy masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> that's my brand. Listen, baby. You know, you're, you're more fun these days. Oh, foreplay pet peeve. That was another one of mine. 
it is funny because we were going over this with Tessa and Tessa was like, don't forget the drugs. Like yep. the drugs won. It we just, laughed so it was hard. An accident. It just happened. I'm not that much fun these days, but I'm going to, I've decided to become fun again. Now that the paralysis on my face is going away a little bit. Aww. I know. R. It's R. still there. It's definitely still there, which is normal. If you guys don't know, I got liposuction along my jawline and my chin, and it's normal to get a little bit of paralysis in your nerves, but it's sort of going away. It can take like two months. Some people can take six months. That's so crazy. They're so lucky. Your face is just fighting back. It's like, uh uh-uh, bitch. (laughs) We like it like that. What'd you do to us? Let's take a really quick break, and then I have a story I've been dying to tell you. I'm excited. Okay. I am so excited to tell you guys about Skims, and I put this shirt on today hoping that we had a Skims read. I didn't check ahead of time, and like, lo and behold. (laughs) Well, I have the same shirt upstairs, so you can always get one. Yeah. (laughs) That's our new requirement. Must be wearing it. (laughs) Yes. So everyone knows that finding the perfect t-shirt can be such a challenge. I really agree with that. And it's even hard to tell in a picture. Like, is this going to fit me the way I I want? a never-ending quest. Length is such a thing. Like, fit. Is it going to be boxy? Is it going to be slim fitting? Yeah. So the perfect t-shirt does exist. And you can find it at skims.com. They have their crop silhouettes to their long sleeve layering tees. There's a style for everyone. So right now, I am wearing the Fits Everybody t-shirt in Coco. And I've been really into Coco lately. I told you. Yes. It is so soft and smooth. And I'm really into brown right now, and it's the perfect shade of brown. It really is. Their color options are amazing. You can wear these with whatever. Like, I'm wearing it with my, you know, cargo pants today. You could do it with, like, jeans. You could put a blazer over it. You could wear it with, like, a skirt. I'm just naming clothing items. Everything you Dress them up, dress them down. (laughs) Yeah, anything you could possibly want. And everything that they have, we're focused on t-shirts today. But, you know, we love their undergarments, their bras and panties. I have a friend that's pregnant, and she said, what is the best bras? And I was like, you got to get scams she was like my boobs just will not stop growing and i was like they have every size i know but we are just obsessed but check out that t-shirt shop you guys are going to be so so impressed and it's just going to be the best fitting tee you've ever worn they really make the best basics and foundations and amazing amazing colors and they have their red is so good like i love their neutrals but their colors oh i love them sparkle lights got me that neon yellow for valentine's like that was like a limited edition but i'm just loving it so much i have that body love our neons I love yeah it. so you can shop the skims t-shirt shop at skims.com now available in sizes extra extra small to 4x if you haven't yet be sure to let them know we sent you after you place your order select podcast in the survey and select our show in the drop down menu that follows Okay. And you guys know that I am so obsessed with sleep. I cannot function without eight hours. I want to be comfy all the time. And that is why Helix is the only thing that lives in my house and has forever. Ashley's house too. I am just obsessed with the mattresses. Just go to helixsleep.com slash GGE. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. Use code helixpartner20 and you'll get 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. I have those pillows in every single room also. So you'll go to their site and you'll take the quiz It's really, really quick. And they'll ask you questions like, do you sleep with a partner or solo? Do you sleep on your back or your side? Do you like a harder mattress, a softer mattress? Do you sleep hot? Things like that. And they offer 20 unique mattresses, the award-winning Lux Collection. They have a newly released Helix Elite Collection. They have mattresses designed for big and tall sleepers and even ones for kids. So the variety is just so, so, so vast. Tessa has in her house too now. I mean, we are only in a Helix family. Only a Helix family. We call ahead to hotels. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we won't stay here <laughs> yeah do you guys have it do you even have a helix i just had friends come and stay my first house guest and i have my helix from new york i have my moonlight lux that i had in new york my queen size and that's in my guest bedroom now and they were like that mattress is just next level i was it's like i know so nice i feel like both of the jenny and karen i feel like they both left and they were like oh Gotta get that. Gotta get one of these. They are so confident in their mattresses. They offer a hundred night trial and a ten to fifteen year warranty to try out the new Helix mattresses. Listen, whether you're like watching TV on it or whatever kind of spicy stuff you do on your mattress, you guys, it will be the best. You're gonna love it. You get <laughs> the best the test of time. Get the best sleep of your life, relaxing evening of your life. And now introducing Helix's most high end collection, the Helix Elite. So check that out. Helix is offering twenty percent off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com/ggge and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer with Helix. Better sleep starts now. I feel like the delivery process. It's just so Everything. nice. Seconds they do. Okay. I haven't mean to tell you the story. Okay. It's like a story that like I told Sparkle Eyes and my brother and like they're the audience. I felt really but... triggered yesterday when you told me that. I was like, I can't believe they know a story that I don't. Well, I know. I've been saving it. <laughs> 
So where I moved in Santa Monica, there was this wonderful park across the street and I take Azul over there every morning and I let him off leash sometimes. It's like big enough and Azul, he's so well trained. He's just like amazing. He doesn't like, he's not a runner or anything. So some people have their dogs off leash and he'll like play with these dogs. He's having the time of his life. So this was like last week. We're in the park, not many people around and there's this woman, she has this like big chocolate lab and Azul loves like a big sturdy dog to play with. I know he does. He really likes a bigger, like a little dog he doesn't want to fuck with, but a big like kind of really like thick dog. So I was like, oh, yeah. So the dog's off leash. So I'm like, they're going to play. So they run up to each other. They're doing the sniff thing and they're getting to know each other. And then that dog runs off into kind of like this wooded area that there's a fence over there, like kind of on this like trail. It's hard to explain, but he kind of runs off. The owner goes, he's looking for food. Okay. And I was like, what? Like, he's this, like, wild animal scavenging. <laughs> what do you mean he's looking for food? This isn't, like, the... Also, like, you feed him at home? The, <laughs> it was just, like, where are we? We're not, like... It's just, like, a nice park. In the wild. We're, like, in a park. And I just laughed the way she said it was so funny. And she goes, he found food there once and ever <laughs> since. Like, the way that this dog one time found some food and now runs everywhere. And I'm like, what even food is it? Like, maybe people picnic in that park. I mean, you know, there's, who knows? Like, there's a grocery store nearby. It's so like funny. One time people. it happened. Like, he right. just keeps coming back. So he keeps coming back for more. I was like, I love this. So he's back there like a while. And she's like starting to get annoyed. I'm kind of annoyed because I want Azul to play with him. Right. And she's like, Cash! Cash, get back here. And she's like trying to get him to come out. And he, she's like getting so frustrated. And poor Azul is like, Where's my friend? Uh-huh. You know, he like wants to play. <laughs> that dog emerges from the wooded area, What's full her? loaf of bread in his <laughs> mouth. Raina, full loaf. We're going to show the photos. Full, not just a full loaf. I, like I went, went to the bakery. These assets will not disappoint you guys. Watch YouTube because it was, and she starts like, and going she's like, that dog's so dumb. And he's like, I'm going to show you, bitch. I'm not coming back. It's like Where a whole bakery of stuff. Did Cash find a full loaf of bread? I was so in dead. In the woods. In the woods. Who is throwing it back there? Like the Hunger Games? So she, I'm like, uh, my jaws dropped. Like, I'm like, he did that dog's got to eat what? so i have really dying. showed her his boss and she can't there's nothing funnier than like an owner trying to get something out of their dog's mouth like i used to have to stick my hand down dewey's throat and pull a chicken wing bone out of his mouth you know like in you atlanta were, there was just so always brave. on the street like there's something so funny when you're like drop it drop it drop it like you've ever seen someone grab their dog's mouth and yeah. then like drop it <laughs> so she's like and he's just he will not come near her like fresh, they're doing like a standoff like a fret what kind of loaf so what here, kind of here, is so i start laughing i can't control myself i started to feel that laugh that like every once in a while where you're like i'm not gonna be able to stop like my I, my face started like hurting i know with I'm a like, stranger you're it's like in my body it's like bubbling uh-huh. up and so i'm laughing so hard and i go to her i'm just like i'm sorry i'm just like this is so funny she goes it is funny but that bread has raisins in it and so dogs are supposed to have raisins <laughs> <laughs> so she's trying to catch him why does he have a cinnamon raisin loaf of bread <laughs> it was the funniest shit and how did he find the most like <laughs> lo- I don't like no one makes these no one has Wait. these raisin it's probably like the least thing that anybody buys I'll show you a photo and the last thing that you'd find in a forest I want you to have the visual anyway Azul and I just had to go home I mean she was not <laughs> you're not ready it's like a whole loaf this looks fake this looks photoshopped like this is not real <laughs> is he unhinged his jaw you guys this is so big right? it's like a big it looks hard. He got a cinnamon. Well, it was definitely though. hard and stale. Like right, because it's been in the forest marinating. And here she is, like trying to get him to drop it. I mean, it's just it oh, was like an old such lady. A stare. Yeah, she's probably in her fifties, maybe like sixties. She's trying to get him. This is hysterical. This so is anyway, That's I've just been so laughing funny. about it all week. And Azul didn't get to play with him that day. Like we just had to go home. Like I was like, I wonder how long it's going to take. She just ended the play date. He found <laughs> yes. a snack and it was over. Also, that is so funny. She's like, one time he had it allegedly, and he just found it that is so funny what happened to people that they just threw their loaf in there well i don't know yeah like who's to say i mean who's to say people picnic in the park a lot there you know like every sunday there's like something true it's like a family reunion someone's just like, like oh, that loaf find of bread. It. yeah yeah well if, if you brought a cinnamon raisin loaf to the picnic i'd also throw it into the woods i'd be like fuck that loaf i'll fuck with a bagel but a loaf of bread it was a spectacle and I, that made my day. That is so. It's really cute. And I just though. been like one. I mean, I don't think the story is that funny unless you see it with the photos. Because you're like, shut up. It can't be a loaf of bread. Full loaf of bread in this yeah, lad's it's mouth. It's certified funny. Okay. A Doberman tried to kill me this morning. I had different experiences with dogs this week. But we've been talking about me getting a dog again. 
I know. Because Alyssa, our friend Alyssa, has a dog who was on the show, and it's like this tiny little Pomeran- Pomeranian, yeah. right? It's three pounds, and I've never seen anything like it. Girls were not stopping at Abbott Kinney. Men, grown men, every five seconds to take pictures of his dog. It's shocking. And I was like, I want that kind of attention. Well, you got to be careful, though, because what if they're sending it to their girlfriend? So you got to like vet them. You know what I'm saying? That's like, why are you? It is a little weird for just like the average man to stop and just take a picture of a I could be wrong. unless it's going to their, to their girlfriend. I could be wrong. Every time I see a guy with like a little fluffy dog, like I, my mind kind of goes to that's his girlfriend's dog. Not always. Oh, always for me. You I do think that. I, a hundred. Why would a guy get a tiny little baby dog like that? Well, everybody has different tastes. Unless yeah. it's a pug and there's two of them. Yeah. Sort of. No, like a fluffy little like purse dog. Yeah, like you know what I mean? Poof. Yeah. I'm just like, that's your girlfriend's dog. We're not talking. If they said hi to me, I'd be like, next. You got to wonder about them. But I really do. I mean, I meet people in that park every day. Like, I met a really good looking guy last week. And I'm just thinking, like, who knows if he was even single or not? Not like it matters to me. But I was just like, Raina's got to get a dog. I mean, you just meet so many people. We've said this so many times. I've made girlfriends that way. Also, you love it. Alyssa is the person that has sold me on it the most because she's like really not a dog person. She's never had a pet in her, in her life and neither have I. And so I said something about having a dog in my home. She's like, I don't even want a dog in my home. And I've never loved anything more than this. She said it's the love of her life. She thinks she loves it more than her boyfriend. <laughs> how did she how did she say it? I forget how she said it. She's so in love. Yeah. She's so in love with it. It like changed her whole life. It's her whole personality. And yeah. I'm here for it every second. Yeah. Okay. I just have one more thing I need to share rant about. Something that I just don't understand that I've realized that people like and I hate so much is matcha. Oh yeah, you're not a fan. Why don't you like it? Rina, it's like green chalk. Do people really like this? That's how I felt about kale. You want that crunch. I feel like my entire inside of my mouth is getting sliced open. I actually don't disagree with you and I like kale. But yes, it used to be just like on buffets as like garnish. Yeah. Like it used to be at the Golden Corral. It's like pipe cleaner. So that's what you want to eat? Yeah. Like it used to be not something you ate. There's a type of kale that I actually eat a lot, but it's more like lettuce. Okay. It's not that like curly, scratchy kale. And I'm like, people don't like this. You don't like this. Well, you have to really like massage it or it's good in like a smoothie or something like that. I do like to massage it. Yeah. But- if you get it like a really good, like it's been softened, it's been massaged, all that. But like, are, do people like matcha be for real? So Brittany likes it. She comes over here to Abikini to go to Chacha Matcha. She loves it. So I, I had this cocktail when I was in Boston called a chacha matcha and it was like a coconut it was very good it was at this like bar called mothership in cambridge and i loved it but it didn't really taste like matcha so i was like well maybe i do like it because i'm over here like who wants this it's chalky it's d- doesn't it's, have a good taste it's very earthy and muted it's dirt it's <laughs> green dirt so we went to brunch recently and i was like i'll get a matcha latte i'd already had a coffee i was like i'll mix it up i didn't check in with you to see how you liked it i got it i was like i hate this you're blowing the lid off and matcha. i turned to kate steinberg and she got one too i was like Hey, I hate this. <laughs> I, was, I was like, wait, do you like this? And I think she's she's so nice. She was like, yeah, I mean, why'd you order it? You know, like, it is I'm funny s- you ordered it. Like, I've never seen you. Well, I thought maybe I was wrong and maybe I do like it. Every, if everybody's doing it, it's one of those things like, that's kale. Seven years of friendship, I've never heard you order matcha. And I did, I was like, good for her. Because I thought I didn't like it because I was like, it tastes like dirt. It's chalky in your mouth. Yeah. It's green. I don't need this. You know, It's too earthy for me. I don't seek it out. So then I go to Alyssa. I'm like, why do people do this? I was like, is there like health benefits? She goes, yeah, I think there's like health benefits. Like she just was like, yeah, I think so. Huh? But what is it? Is Are there? Do you guys do matcha? I think it's trendy. Tessa says there's health benefits. Okay. So, okay, that's under, that's fine then. The lines for Chacha Matcha, I mean, you should see it on the weekend. Do the it health benefits blocks. outweigh the chalk dirt taste of it? I mean, you could say that about most things and I'd say, no, just take a walk or drink some water. You know, like do something else nice for your body. Eat Tessa, some what are the benefits? There's a lot of research being done right now for like anti-tumor and the inhibition of potential cancer cells with frequent consumption. Oh, God. I don't understand once the thing in the sentence that she it just cures said. Cancer. Potential cancer or something. If it's preventative As- cancer, that's great. So it's not smoking. So I'm doing my part. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, if you guys love matcha, go off. Just like anything we say in this podcast, would love to reiterate that. <laughs> oh, we don't care what you do. This is just about us. <laughs> this, is, this is our opinion. This is what we put in our bodies. You do what you want. I just think it's it's this trendy. You're blowing the lid off matcha. Well, I'm with you. You're on right. The... I don't care about it. Yeah. I don't seek it out. I don't care about it. You ordered it. I was like, look at her go. She's trying something new. She's being really LA. But I think Chacha Matcha has made themselves a good lifestyle brand. Like, sure. there's a swing to sit in. There's all these Instagram yeah. areas. Where you can take photos. Like, I don't even know if people like it or they're just in there to take a photo on the wicker swing. Right. Anyway, I'm not going to do it. Just like Kale. Not doing it. But Green then I'm juice? like, wait, is it going to prevent cancer? Because now I'm all scared about cancer. I watch this movie. Was it New York Mag or like The Cut or it was Why Are So Many Young oh People God, Getting Cancer? So 
Oh. They just did a whole thing on this. I, this stuff enrages me. I'm like, I just think that like we're being poisoned in America with like our processed food and the microplastics and environmental factors. We're not taking care of health care wise. I mean, I know there's so many countries like worse off, but I get really mad about it because if I got cancer, I'd be like, I don't have any in my family. Like this is an environmental. I'm a healthy person. You know, like I just feel kind of angry. I feel angry at all the young women that are getting cancer. And I just think so much of it is about us like being poisoned in America with our food and other factors. And I get mad about it. Okay. So anyway, I hate matcha and I'm blowing the whistle on it. I just, I think it's very funny when these things become part of like the cultural zeitgeist. Everybody like takes Instagram photos of it. They wait in line to get their little like social media pics. And it's like, kale's the same. I don't believe that but you like it. If you or like green it. juice, <laughs> <laughs> green juice. I mean, like I just short circuited. Green. I don't. I like. I like green juice. No, this is you all like pick a, it in a lineup. This between, is subjective. You could have other stuff of what, like rosé. <laughs> <laughs> like no. orange juice, apple juice, tomato juice, a disgusting green juice. Oh no, I actually do like that fresh taste of a green juice. That is so gross. That Over is... a tomato juice. I love a tomato Sick. juice. Oh my god, it's so good. Guys, this just in. Tastes are subjective. <laughs> that is actually the only thing that's ever gotten spilled near me on a plane is my tomato juice. I ordered it and it got spilled on the person next to me. That is so offensive. I would be so mad. I would at be me. so mad if someone's <laughs> dusty V8. Oh, it's a thing. Tomato juice on planes. You yeah. know about this? Yeah, it's like a thing that people's like taste buds change up in the air and that like tomato <laughs> juice is like the number one thing ordered on a plane and like nobody would order it on the ground, but it's up in the air. People order it. It's a thing. I feel like ginger ale is also like that, too. Yes, it's a thing. Great plane drink. <laughs> there was an article one time. It said why ginger ale is the most elite plane beverage. I, and I read it, too. I was like, I, <laughs> like, I was like, why did I click on this? I know it's clickbait. All it is is basically like ginger ale is so good. <laughs> it is so good. Well, I don't think it, to do it when I'm on the ground. But when I'm up there, I'm like, treat yourself. Yeah. And ginger ale I, I, is also like I'm very in support of it for nausea. <laughs> No, also you. saltine crackers. Also great. Moscow mules. That's ginger beer. Actually, okay. Coming out and supporting ginger ale. Okay. Well, we have so much more to say, but I am just going to tell you guys about Daily Harvest. I have my Daily Harvest smoothie. You gave me those glass straws, which I've been loving. So I had my date and almond smoothie this morning. I mean, I've been drinking Daily Harvest since you guys have known me, honestly, on this podcast. And it really just makes healthy habits so easy. And they take the work out of keeping healthy habits. So all you have to do is just enjoy. So you can go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. So we we love everything that they do. Again, like the smoothies. I mean, I just can't imagine my life without them. Like you will never come to my house and not see a freezer full of Daily Harvest smoothies. The mint and cacao, banana almond, date and almond, strawberry cashew, strawberry peach, avocado and greens. Those are some of my faves. I love their bowls. I love their soups. I'm obsessed with the smoothies though. I don't know why, but I can't make a smoothie. I like their snacks. Yeah, it's an art form. A I, good smoothie. I don't know why. I'm just like, I could do it. I go to the store. I buy all this stuff. It's never the right proportions. <laughs> I remember this one time in Atlanta. I got this fancy new blender. The company sent it to me, and I was supposed to create some content around it because I was like an influencer way back when, you guys. And it was like a $600 blend tech blender or whatever. And I was like so excited to go to the store. I bought all this stuff for a smoothie. It tastes like dog shit. Yeah, I was like, oh my God. Bad. I spent like 50 bucks. I was just like, I can't do I'm not good at this. Yeah. Let them do the work yeah, for you. Yeah, let them do the work. With Daily Harvest, they have so many plants plant-based options built on organic fruits and vegetables that are easy to prep, free of gluten, fillers, seed oils, added starches, and sugars. It really takes guesswork and effort out of eating food that you know is going to be good for you. And again, everything just comes to your door. You can customize your box every week. You can skip a week if you want. They make it really, really easy to just like stick to these healthy habits and have your breakfast, lunch, dinner, everything. I did that shakshuka bowl that we talk about. I did it the, the other day for like lunch and I wanted something a little bit more hearty. So I just threw an egg into it. Yeah, I do it all the time. I chicken or something. And, yeah. yeah. It was incredible. So you don't need to add a protein or an egg, but if you want to, you can. And you guys can start now. So create healthy habits that last with Daily Harvest. For a limited time only, go to dailyharvest.com slash GGE to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash GGE for $30 off your first box and free shipping. Dailyharvest.com slash GGE. Okay. I'm very excited. So we're talking about trust and people's character today. And so I wanted to just open- <laughs> so deep. 
Yeah, well, we wanted to open with this thing that honestly I can't stop talking about. Yeah, it's your it, whole personality. It's my whole personality right now. It's really been living like on my mind so much, and you and I have had such good conversations about it, and I I find it really interesting. And so the cover of New York Magazine this month it's an article about Andrew Huberman. If you don't know who that is, he is a world famous neuroscientist. He's been on the show. He has a podcast called The Huberman Lab, which is one of the biggest podcasts in the country and the world. Millions and millions of followers and listeners, and it's essentially brain and body health information. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, like his episode about like drinking what alcohol does to the brain was like amazing. So this article is called Andrew Huberman's Mechanisms of Control, the Private and Public Seductions of the World's Biggest Pop Neuroscientist. So basically it talks about his personal life and it paints him to be a huge scumbag, Mm -hmm. a liar and a narcissist and a cheater. And Mm, I don't know if I'd say narcissist. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Mm. I don't know that they said that, but. I think they did. But regardless, I also want to like hold space for the the fact that like he has not commented on this thus Mm -hmm. far. You don't know what's true. You don't know if context was removed from interviews. Ashley and I always want to believe women and the things that they say. But essentially, they interviewed a lot of his exes and mm-hmm. one in particular throughout the story that basically said that he cheated on her with all these women and that they had all connected and mm-hmm. shared timelines and stories and that he was moving in with one one day and sleeping with the other the same day. And one was out of town. He'd fly the other one in mm-hmm. while she was in town. He'd go out to dinner with another woman. He was leading all these women to believe he was in serious relationships with them. Only someone that healthy could have that kind of I mean, The comments are time <laughs> And <laughs> the comments are like, teach me how do this it's disgusting obviously if anyone who does anything like that is just like bad person yeah so you know what i'm saying like if this were all true Uh, yeah we don't know if this is true and context can certainly be removed people have written articles about us and i've been like that's not what i I, said like i don't even like saying like if this is true like uh, to me i'm like this was fact checked and there is multiple sources i just i guess we're always leaving space for something else this is not the case exactly yeah so just to be super clear you know we didn't live that experience you know what i mean like we weren't in it and so we just have the one side of it but there's two sides to every story I think New York Magazine is a highly reputable media outlet and I don't think they'd run somebody on the cover if this wasn't highly fact checked but crazier things have happened yeah so you and I have just been talking a lot about does it matter somebody's like professional versus their personal life and would you take advice professional advice about your brain and body health from somebody who is arguably pretty duplicitous Mm -hmm. and treats the people that he presumes to love like this does it matter it's not a relationship coach and he does not speak about his personal life i've never heard him talk about it even on our show he maybe mentioned he had a sister and that was as deep as he goes yeah personal life yeah and i'm sure you guys might be thinking like what was your experience with him off the record and he was just very professional he's really like a rigid type of person i wouldn't say he's Warm. Oh, warm. But that but he's he doesn't claim to like you can tell by his videos and stuff. This is to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he was to us who you see, even like he was on Andrew Schultz's podcast and they posted a clip. They were like, We got him to laugh a little bit. You know what I mean? Like Serious that's guy. who he is. So our experience with him was exactly what you would expect. Yeah. Professional though, on time, did yeah. the topic, gave us a lot of his time, would yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have anything else to say about yeah. it. Yeah. Brandon and I have just beat this to death because we find it, A, we have a personal connection to it, but we find it very fascinating on so many different levels. But there is certainly plenty of opinions online of like, this doesn't matter. Like, why does this affect the information he disseminates, his education? You know, you said something like people are saying he's done a lot more good for the world than bad. But to me, though, I feel as though if this is who he is as a person, it just speaks to his integrity. So you have integrity or you don't. I don't think that they're exclusive of how you are with the people in your life and your personal and professional career. I think there are worlds in which, listen, someone's like an amazing parent and they're like a shitty boyfriend or a shitty husband or, oh, you know, right. a shitty employee or we whatever. Have great friends that are shitty boyfriends. Yeah. I so date them. I, I want to say that, you know, not everything is totally connected in your life. But I don't know if you are lying day in, day out and manipulating people. And again, if this were true, putting these women's health at risk by sleeping with them all unprotected, which is what the article says. Is that someone you want to take advice from? Is that someone you want to pay to go see? You know, he does live events. And I'm kind of talking about this some big picture stuff, you know, like 
this was pretty much a hit piece, but these things happen all the time. And I think it makes you consider like, is this someone I want to support? You don't throw all the information out the window that you've absorbed from them and are potentially utilizing in your life. But if it's someone that you know is lying to people day in, day out, do you believe what they're telling you about the supplements you should order? Yeah, you know? I, I totally agree. And the quote from the Guardian article about this, I've read a lot of comments that people have left on his and New York Mag, but the Guardian wrote an article about this. And the quote was, you know, this is not about his relationship to women in his life and friends in his life. This is about his relationship to the truth. And I thought mm. that was really profound. That mm -hmm. like, Oh, I love that. Yeah. Do I want to take advice from somebody, medical or not, that this is how they live their lives? No. Could I go get it from somebody else? Probably. And I say all that having really enjoyed his show. I mean, his episode yeah. about what alcohol does to the brain was really tremendously moving. And it is one of the most popular podcast episodes just in general in the country. Yeah, I listened to him talk about water for two fucking hours. And then <laughs> I bought the water pitcher that he recommended. And he was very clear of like, this isn't a sponsor. I just know that this is the one that works the best or whatever. Listen, he also, he's not accused of being a physical abuser or- These are all women in their 30s. Molester, They're not things like that. Right. So we, when we talk about, can you separate the art from the artist? That usually is like in a different world that we're talking like Woody Allen, R. Kelly, stuff like that. Totally. But I tend to think that there are so many people in the world creating good art, providing good information. Like why not take it from someone that you- want to support as a person and has integrity. And I just can't stress enough, like this isn't like us slamming Andrew Huberman. It's like talking about it in a bigger level. Like, again, if everything in this article proves to be true, like he's a shitty dude, mm -hmm. but there's always room for context and for the person to share their side of it too. Whatever, you know what I mean? To me, it's a larger conversation because yeah, it could come out that None of these things were true. I don't believe that that's the case. I don't think New York Magazine is doing some hack job. But he could say, okay, we've removed the context from every one of these stories. They all knew about each other, blah, blah, blah. Who knows? But yes, do you want to take advice from anybody that chooses to live their life like that? And I don't. Like mm -hmm. somebody that could weave a web of lies that much. As funny as those comments are, like, if you could date six women, teach me how to do it. Like yeah. the comments have me like dying. But like, I just, I don't need that person's energy in my life at all. I don't need to listen to your show. I'll get that information elsewhere. Yeah. This, I definitely would not give him my money for a live show. I don't need to buy the stuff he recommends. I don't need to listen to his show and give him money, essentially, via listenership. You want to go to the, like, top, top of examples, and it's somebody like Donald Trump. But you know what I mean? Like, you can really look at someone's character. I mean, that's an extreme example. But these things all do kind of run together in someone's life. I mean, most if, of the time. If you guys, the audience, found out I just kicked puppies <laughs> when I was taking walks, it doesn't have any bearing on my ability to give dating advice, but you wouldn't listen to this show. Right. I would just be like, I'll go find this from somebody else. Yeah. Like, so man. we'll see. I mean, Rain and I got a little bit of insider info, and the plan is that he's not going to ignore this and not say anything. I think that it is being dug into on his side. And there's some like things out there that he hired this PR company and there's some tweets and some information about it too. But we got a little from another source and this isn't the end of the story. <laughs> this isn't over yet. This isn't over. <laughs> So we obviously found it really interesting. And one of my takes, and again, big picture, what I think is so crazy and I say to you is if you, whether you're Andrew Huberman or not, whether you're someone who is lying, manipulating, cheating, evading taxes, doing shady business deals, like I think it's so crazy to do those things and live that life and have the audacity to try to become famous. Like <laughs> I find it so wild. And you you speak on it. You're like, yeah, but that's this, these people's character. It emboldens them. I'm like, yeah. I find it so crazy because enough people get taken down. You know, we were talking about the Chrisleys, for example, and I'm trying to think of others. The one housewife and the really shady, like, lawyer that was taking on people's like medical claims. Erica Girardi. It, yeah. yeah. Right? Did he get mm -hmm. in trouble? Tom Girardi? D yeah. Did he go to jail? So people say that he may be faking dementia. Because That's what it was. Okay. immediately, the, the, the whole thing was he went to a nursing home. But interestingly, they said that his condition has not progressed in four years, which is unheard of with Alzheimer's. So right. they suggested that he is lying. Okay. But like that's I go back to Trump I'm like but again like whatever he just he's like so slippery and he's just gotten out of so much but I'm just like it's so crazy to me to know you're doing bad things but I guess if you're truly like a narcissist or a megalomaniac you don't think you're doing bad things but mm -hmm. whatever if you are a person that you know you're doing something shady or against the law or you're just really like ruining life after life and you're like you know what I'm gonna do is be in the spotlight <laughs> I think it's like your time will come don't you think it's so crazy like if Andrew Huberman was like you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be 
have this. I'm going to have six girlfriends and I'm going to weave a web of lies. Just stay a professor at Stanford. Don't start a podcast. Don't try to be famous. Like, yeah, I think the, it's the, the audacity the, for the me. The author wrote this. She said in an impressive feat of logistical jujitsu. And then she goes through his whole day of like cheating with all these different women. It was hysterical yeah. the way she wrote it out. But do you believe, because again, like half of the comments in this article are just like, Okay, well, he's not giving dating advice. We cheated on some women. I don't think those women would agree. But, like, if you're not a trustworthy person, you're just not trustworthy in any aspect of your life. And the only caveat, because I said earlier, like, we have guy friends that we wouldn't date. But I don't think that they're, like, bad people. I also am saying that about bo- boys that are 27, not men that are 50. Yeah. And, yeah, right all our guy friends are 27. <laughs> You know, 40, right? I think um, I used to think this. Yeah. You but know? also, like, <laughs> we're not talking about, again, if it were true, we're not talking about cheating once. We're not talking about one woman that is coming out and saying he cheated on me. It's so different. Oh, like, the spectrum's so, I mean, yeah. multiple women saying he led me to believe we were in serious relationships. Multiple. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like, if you read the article, you're picturing it like that scene from Always Sunny with like the red yes. string, you know, like him trying to keep it together. <laughs> yeah. It's a testament to his health. It really is. <laughs> Who is that kind of energy? I People are asking. What if he just Andrew listen, Huberman if he did four. a podcast episode about this, that's his rebuttal. He's like, I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. Oh, that my God. That would be the number one most listened to podcast in the history of the world. He was like, I sleep for four hours a night with tape on my mouth, and then I wake up, and I stare into the sun, and I get in my cold plunge, and then I, t- <laughs> <laughs> and then I text bitch number one. He was like, and then <laughs> I pour some AG1, and I stare into the sun some more, and then I get into my infrared sauna, and then I text bitch number two. <laughs> you know... <laughs> One of the funny quotes in here was that they compared photos and he sent very similar photos to a lot of them every day. But like, it's not the same one. That's funny. Like, You're not going to get me on that. Right. <laughs> I took a new one for all of them. <laughs> right. So at the end of the day, he can be like, wasn't the same photo. Wasn't the same photo. They're like, uh, uh, all right. I he's guess like, you got me there. Like, I got you on that one. He's like, you can tell by the sunlight. It's in a different place. <laughs> I had just, I had just burned out my retinas and I had to take a break. And then the sun had moved. Just as for a day. I'd love to be inside the brain of somebody that like can manage doing something like this. I just, I only have so much mental capacity and emotional capacity to give to somebody. And it's for one person. Like mm-hmm. my brother says jokingly, like my wife is so much work. How could I like ever do oh. it? And he means that kindly. He's obsessed with her, but he's like, that is a full-time job. having one relationship. I don't <laughs> yeah. have the capacity for another oh, person. Totally. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to lead us in to the topic? I'm done. Honestly, that's all I wanted to talk okay, about. Okay, great. Today. I will start. Okay. So <laughs> here's the thing, you guys, here's we the thing. are talking today about friends of the opposite sex. Oh, that just reminds me that I wanted to read an email from this gay man who wrote in, he was like, I can't even talk about this because it's a whole ass mess when it's all the same gender. I, that's why I said to Tessa, I was like, what about when it's like a same sex couple and then another friend with two men? Yeah, we've had we had a few like gay and bisexual people write in and we're like, I can't, don't even get me started. So, you know, if we're just talking about like, you know, your male partner has a female friend or a bunch of female friends or you have male friends and he's jealous, you know, all these types of things. And we crowdsourced it on Instagram and just the topics that you guys wanted to see. And we also had seen emails come through that all fell into this vein that we were like, okay, we feel like this is enough for a topic. But I really want to direct anyone who is interested in this topic back to our episode from October 18th, 2020. And it's called Is It Purely Platonic? And it is so good. (laughs) Ashley was being so funny yesterday. She was like, we're so good at this. We're well, so you never cute know, and funny. Like, listening back, like, you never know. But we tackled this so well that I was, I listened to it in full and I was like, we have to do something different because we don't just need a refresh because it's, it's perfect. It really covers it all. It covers all the bases. Like we just, you got to listen to it. If you are new around here and this topic intrigues you really go back and listen to that again, it's October, 2020 and it's great. And it talks so much about the different types of situations. And you know, if your male partner, for example, has that best female friend, like, I don't know, we just, we covered it all. So we had you guys submit some new questions. We got some great emails about this. We'll break those down. I made a list of my like check in with yourself rules that you Mm -hmm. can just ask yourself to kind of de-escalate a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, I have certainly dealt with this over the years. You know, I think that this like, you know, can I trust them with their friends? The opposite sex is a very like one size fits one kind of thing. Like I've had people that I don't trust that I've dated and no, I probably wouldn't trust them with those women because of the way that they're communicating to those women that they feel about me. Mm-hmm. And I've had other people I've dated that are, I have only female friends. My last like serious boyfriend, uh, 
only female right. friends, spent all this time with them, and I just didn't really think anything about it. Yeah, not an issue. I mean, yeah, again, like we covered this top to bottom four years ago, and our lives have changed a little bit since then. And so, yeah, I do think your ex had really like best female friends. Yeah, well, I mean, and there's certain situations I'm more comfortable with than others. I still, I was thinking this morning, like him and I were leading towards breaking up and I knew that he was like really struggling and so was I and he told me that he had like gone out to lunch with this female friend of his and he was like I talked to her about it and I got advice from her and I was like I don't I don't love it Mm -hmm. I'm not friends with her I'm glad that you have a support system Mm -hmm. and I think that it can be really wonderful for men to have female friends because I think that they can really help them to open their eyes up to their partner and I think it can be really beneficial I didn't really know the girl and I wasn't friends with her and I didn't really love knowing that you like set up a special lunch to talk about breaking up with me yeah and I trusted that girl like had the most positive intentions Mm -hmm. and would help him like see all sides of it it's just I didn't feel comfortable and I almost just didn't need to know that kind Mm -hmm. of I didn't need to know the like the outline of what you guys spoke about today Mm -hmm. yeah I know I mean it's situational I can't imagine a world in which I just didn't trust my current partner in every situation I guess if it just started to feel so excessive that it wasn't before you know I'd be a little sus Mm -hmm. it's just like oh you're with her all the time you're constantly texting sending memes talking on the phone I don't know but that's just not the case his his best female friend is like the one who originally like wanted us to get together and she's married to his best childhood friend I'm like that's the dream because he has like the best girlfriend perspective on things Mm -hmm. but she's like married to his best childhood friend I'm like this is amazing and she really predates you yeah. So like, right. no, she's not a new friend. I think that people worry that like their partner is going to form a really emotionally intimate or sexually intimate. And it's, I, I think it's arguable, which is worse with somebody that's not you mm-hmm. and that you like have these conversations with somebody outside the relationship. And you're like, I don't love that you're sharing these things with somebody that isn't me. And I like that you said the thing about like texting all the time, calling all the time. I mean, the volume does matter. Like mm-hmm. Chelsea and Jimmy. I mean, Chelsea was just like, you're on the phone. If you guys watch Love is Blind, which if you don't, you can't listen to this podcast. But, <laughs> you know, Chelsea was like, you know, that girl texts you all day, every day, calls you all day, every day. And I think that it, unfortunately, when you get into a serious relationship, your relationship with the people in your life does change a little bit mm-hmm. sometimes. And I don't think it has to always happen. We have plenty of guy friends. We talk about it all the time. They get silly with us, talk about how we look mm-hmm. and their wives know about it. Mm-hmm. And like they're in on it. But I do think that for better or for worse, there's trade-offs in everything. When you're in a relationship, sometimes your relationships with people of the opposite sex have to change a little. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Gotta pay the toll. Yeah. And this whole like no new friends kind of situation, like Rain and I addressed that on the 2020 episode as well, because I used Francis as an example, who was someone that I became friends with when he was already with his girlfriend, now wife, and we became new friends and close. You know what I mean? But it was like the way he went about it. He invited us for like a social hang. He and I weren't like getting dinners together one on one. You know, like, I don't know. We just we we covered a lot of it. But some things came up in our Instagram story. And this is kind of something that came up. A lot of people said no one-on-one hangs and is it appropriate to hang out one-on-one guy girl as friends when one person is in a relationship and listen you can have whatever boundary you want but I can't endorse that statement you know like Rob or if it's like Bobby or we have guy friends that we go out with one-on-one if we have a partner if they have a partner if we both have partners you know not all the time but it happens again it's like one size fits one I would only have a problem with that if I really didn't trust my partner's judgment of what they're going to do on the one-on-one hang I mean you and I like Francis and Julio who are comedians in New York you know who that is they're good friends of ours they're one of them engaged one's married you and I go out to dinner on double dates us and them yeah without their partners and Rob stays with me every time he comes to Mm -hmm. LA him and I are up all night long drinking Drinking, by ourselves we get up in the morning i'm running around we copy together just being all like his wife would never blink at that she just doesn't care right but i think that it's because your partner makes you feel like you're in on it yeah yeah like there's ways that it feels and then there's these unwritten rules that we all kind of know deep down i think it's just sometimes you can't even name it you just feel it like if you feel like your partner can't have a one-on-one hang with somebody of the opposite sex i would either check in with myself and say like if i've been cheated on in the past am i carrying these sort of like notions Mm -hmm. into my new relationship or is this not a trustworthy person okay i'm gonna pitch you some more okay hit me should i always tell my man when i text with my guy friends or is it okay to trust i'm like what what i gotta give you like a report of the day 
I don't know what's going on here. This is one sentence from a stranger. But if you feel like your man is expecting you to tell him every time you text a guy friend, I would say that's a red flag. Yeah, that's a that's a problem in the relationship. That's excessive control. Like who made you feel like that question was something you should ask? I, I don't like it. I don't like it for her. I like feel for her. That's a who has ever asked that like without some sort of like previous trauma. You know, those couples that have like extreme like they're both like that. And they're like, yeah. if you talk to somebody, I'm like, yeah. you need to fucking tell me about it. If you want to exist in that toxicity, that's your business. But that's exhausting. We don't own anybody. So it would exhaust me to like monitor somebody's behavior. We say that all the time. Like monitoring somebody's behavior is the last thing that's going to stop them from cheating on you because mm-hmm. they'll just find a way. OK, this one. How do we feel about pet names? Baby Boo, Darling, Honey. To a friend? To a friend. (laughs) I don't like it. I mean, Rob. This better be your mom's friend. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. There's like exceptions to every rule. Like Rob is always like, you got a hot rod body. And he'll say that to me in front of his wife. And I, from her, I'm not liking it. But like, she's, she's like, Rob's going to rob. Like, it's funny. So if Sparkle Eyes was over here talking about my body, I don't think he would like it. Well, this and is he like also would never. One of those things, you know it when you see it. Like, is your man's friend trying to get at you by saying this? Also, can you imagine, oh, Raina? she has a name for him? That's what it is. Like, pet names. Yes. Even like, worse than if he has a name for her. Can you imagine if we were, like, calling our guy friends, like, baby boo? I'm uncomfortable. I don't even have a boyfriend. I don't like it. You know what I Again, mean? Again, that's one of those things. You get into a relationship. There's things that you sacrifice. That's done. The, the names are over. Right. The little cutesy names. Someone had a really good one. (laughs) In quotes. Is it your deepest, darkest secret? (laughs) I thought you put that on there. Someone wrote that. And that's a nod to Jimmy and Chelsea. Okay, Raina, this one fired me up. Okay. Okay. A girl sending my boyfriend selfies of her in a bikini asking, should I post this on Instagram? I really hate this. So, like, I'm speaking as the friend of guys that are in relationships. When my guy friends get into relationships... I that know stops. that that is over. Yes. And like, even like, I have a guy friend who recently got into a relationship and I literally was, I was like trying on this outfit and I used to text him all these photos, these uh-huh. outfits. And I went to text him this photo and I was like, if I'm her, I do not like that I see this. And so I just didn't. I sent it to somebody else. Yeah. It's just weird to refuse to adapt your behavior. That's what it is. If your you gotta adapt. guy friend gets a girlfriend. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to change completely. I get it if he's dating somebody that is forbidding him to see you. That's a whole different story. But if none of that's going on, he's just starting to date somebody, it's really childish to refuse to stop sending him bikini pics. <laughs> <laughs> if that used to be your vibe. Like, I'm kind of thinking, like, Bobby Corey and I used to do some more of that stuff. Like, we would just, you know, if we felt like we were looking good and we're working out and stuff like that, you know. But the second he started dating somebody, I would die if she saw me send him a picture you know totally especially if you've met the person it's like even worse like the guy I'm talking about I had recently met his new girlfriend I really liked her we had like a fun night out he like sort of went off with his friends and her and I stayed at this bar all night and just mm-hmm. like hung out I really liked her and like the thought of doing that to her I was like yeah. oh never yeah okay I'm gonna run through a These bunch in so a row fun. okay does it ever not end with him fucking the work wife work wife is a hard no men aren't funny and they don't make jokes he wants to fuck her don't come at me with the work wife the way I would throw these hands so fast work wife is fucking weird pick me energy <laughs> the way I would knock my boyfriend out if he said he had a work wife. <laughs> Listen, we did we did fire people up because we wrote work wife in the Instagram story. Like we were like, you know, work wife, et cetera. Like we weren't like pop off about work well, wives. The most people triggering. took it and ran with it's it. Real, but first of all, work wives usually don't predate you. It's just like they're not a long time friend. Uh, I mean, I guess either way. Yeah. I guess they're just, they're not long time friends usually. They're newer, f- newer in the last couple years. Maybe, yeah. I don't love it. Could you find something else to call her? I hate it. Well, I think I said this before, but I had an ex and he, I don't know. I also wonder how much the job matters. Like, he had a, he bartended with this girl and they were like really close. Cause I'm like, are they bartending together or are they presenting together? I don't know what makes the difference, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, are they on a, a legal team or are they slinging drinks? But I think it was that she had a really serious boyfriend who was a smoke. Like something about it is if they're partnered up too. Like totally. it felt like now we're all in this together and like I could joke around with her boyfriend or, you know what I mean? Like that's what it is. I mean, I guess it does sort of matter because like, okay, you're bartending together. I know that bartending is work. I worked in restaurants my whole life, but there is a huge level of just palling around, talking shit, being inappropriate, like all night long yeah. versus like in a really corporate sales environment, you're just not doing that as much. So like I could see getting a little more 
nervous about somebody who's just like joking around with somebody all night long. There's alcohol. You're out late together. You're coming home late because you're with her. I mean, listen, my ex-fiance ended up dating and moving in with the girl that he would refer to as like his work wife. I mean, listen, that is who you have to worry about. That is. I mean, he like, was a bartender. I, she was a waitress. And that's immediately who started fucking the I, day we broke up. I don't like the term. My boyfriend would never call someone that. He also works in an industry where there's not a lot of women. <laughs> try, try to find a woman. Lucky me. <laughs> no, try to find one. But he would never say that. He would be like, that's crazy. Ashley's not, I'm not going to say that to her. You know, like, and I'm not saying if your partner says that, that's a red flag either. Like, I just think people really hate this and it's really triggering and it's weird foreshadowing for who they would date next or, you know, worst case scenario, cheat on you with. And I don't know, people just really hate it. And I don't really know what to say about it besides like, I'm just validating it. And you, you know, when you see it. And again, we talked about this on the other episode as well. Yeah, I mean, I think you can also just say, like, as your girlfriend, as your wife, your sneak another, it doesn't communicate to me that you respect me very much, that you're referring to somebody else like that. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable to me. So, like, find a different way to speak about this person. I don't like that you've communicated this to me like this. Yeah, I mean, does he want you to talk about your work husband? Well, I think about this all the time. Like, what? how would they feel in the reverse? Yeah, how would they like this? Yeah. I mean, I guess there's a world in which, A, they pretend they don't care, but they do, or B, they're just so chill or evolved, and they're like, I don't care. But yeah, that's all I got to say. I love the one that said men aren't funny. I like that she just tossed that in there. Men aren't funny. They aren't funny. They don't make jokes about that. He wants to fuck her. Oh, I did not connect that to her. I thought she was just like making a dig at men. Well, her point (laughs) is just like, that's not a joke. He wants to fuck her. Or he wants to marry her. It doesn't feel good to anybody. No one likes this. Let's retire this in 2024. Unless it works for you. Sure. It, then go for it. We don't care what you do. You Just, know, the number one work wife in pop culture, Daisy Jones. That That's a true work wife right there. My favorite book. And look what happened. I mean, it happens and a little. Camilla knew. She knew. But they had a specific set of circumstances, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's the prettiest woman I've ever seen in my life. Camilla? Camilla. Yeah. Riley Keough is beautiful also, but the oh, woman totally. who played Camilla, oh my God. No, too would... much hotness in that show. Okay, should we get into some of these emails? Yeah, I've, just, I've made a list and I it's like my checklist of like, am I acting crazy? Okay. And like, how does this feel? And we probably did cover this a little bit on the last episode. So I'm asking myself, what purpose does this friendship serve? So like, okay. is it somebody at work that they do just talk about work with? I don't have to talk about work with you? Great. <laughs> That's so funny, that whole mindset. You're like, are they just blowing you? Great. One less blowjob for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your work wife's cooking for you great one less one meal, meal I have to outsource it ladies oh, you're in a relationship with your work wife one less relationship i have to be in <laughs> honestly i can see smart. the clip that she says fuck the work wife over my face maybe you should fuck the work wife that would be a plot twist oh the girlfriend and the work wife get together yeah there it is power move <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. What purpose does this friendship serve? Is there a reason to not trust this friendship? Are they talking about how hot they are all the time? Is is this girlfriend just single and ready to mingle with your man? Think about it. Does this friendship honor a romantic relationship? So that's like kind of what I check in with myself about. Do you feel welcome and included in the friendship? Like, mm-hmm. am I part of this? Does this person know I'm alive? Mm-hmm. You talk about me freely. Is your partner secretive about their communication with this person? Which I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And are they crossing normative relationship boundaries such as touching? Is this person touching them? They make comments about their appearance. Intimate discussions and demands of your partner's time. So Mm -hmm. like I said, I had that situation with my ex and he was having these conversations about me with this girl. I don't think he was cheating on me with her. I know he wasn't, but it felt inappropriate. It felt like an intimate level that maybe you could have spoken to your sister or a therapist about. Yeah, I like the demands of the time too. Like I do feel like, you know, Rob has done so much for me and done so much for us, but I was respectful to the fact when he, yes, of course, started dating his now wife, Allison, but even his girlfriends before that, like, you know, I might not need to hit him up all the time. He's got a partner in his life. Like, I can hire TaskRabbit here and there, totally. you know. But I also think as someone who has been single most of my life and, you know, the duration of this podcast until about a year ago, like, speaking from a single woman standpoint, like, I don't like that sometimes single women get vilified more than sure. someone who is a partner. Like I just said, how my ex-boyfriend's work wife had a partner, so I felt less threatened. So, yes, I would have felt more threatened if she was single. She was beautiful. And that's not fair either, but it makes sense why we think that way. So I always felt that as a single woman, I needed to put in a little more work with the partner to show that I wasn't a threat. You know, like I almost just felt not like I'm a person that's going to ever like suck up, but it was always on my mind. Like I'm a single girl looking for a partner and here I am 
friends or even newer friends with your man, I get it. And maybe not. Maybe they were like, oh, she's not pretty. She's no wor- nothing to worry about. But like, I would come at it from a standpoint of like, I just want the girlfriend or wife or fiance or whatever to extra know that I'm not a threat. You know, I whatever think, that looks like. I think people in relationships have more to lose. So they're less likely to cross a boundary with your partner because that would also affect their own relationship. It's like single people have a little less to lose mm-hmm. because they might just get your man. Mm-hmm. They're not going to lose their man, mm-hmm. you know? Right. So that's why they're viewed that way sometimes of like, she has nothing to lose. You and know? I do think about that too. Jolene. Like, the Jolene effect. Jolene. <laughs> I was Jolene. Like, is she? Poor Jolene. Yeah, I do try to be cognizant of it too. I don't think any of our friends, wives or girlfriends are threatened by me again. Maybe not pretty enough, but <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole thing. They're like, Ashley and Raina, no one's ever oh, worried about you two. No, you guys are fine. I'm a 10. You're not. <laughs> like I think about like our two friends that are married like Bobby who's married to a Barry's instructor and Rob who's married to a certified supermodel that is so and true and both of them are like we're not worried about you guys no yeah no, we're all you, set do this you didn't need to do this episode yeah oh just, honestly take your shirt off and run on them we don't care <laughs> <laughs> okay my final parameter would you accept the same parameters right so like if it tur- was turned around on you and it was like you're not allowed to do any of this would you accept that shit mm-hmm. and I think a lot of people are like yeah I would it's like would you though yeah. You want to be controlled and told I know. To it's not a fun way to live. It's all fun and games until you lose all your friends. It's all fun and games. You know, at the beginning of a relationship, it's all hot and heavy until you wake up one day and you're like, oh my God, they have controlled my life in the worst way. <laughs> right. Okay. So we have a few emails that we wanted to go over. Now this one, it's a little on the longer side, but we do have an update. So you guys just stay along for the journey. I'm so invested in this. You guys all know that Ashley's going to read this, not me. Yeah, so I, but I had to email her back yeah. and be like, we I was need excited. the, the follow up. We need the tea. Okay. This woman is seeking advice, but she just wrote us a really nice thing. And I just wanted to read it because I love the backstory. But she said, before I get into this, I wanted to say I found you all in 2021 when I got divorced and was entering the dating world again after six years of marriage. I had no confidence because my ex-husband left me after six months of stating he no longer found me sexually attractive. We tried therapy, but realized he was using me. I was the breadwinner and paid for his college education, Jesus, and never really loved me. That did a number to me mentally. Along with that, my ex cheated on me with his professor. So not great. So oh my God. keep this in mind. And then the way that she handled the situation going forward, like it's, it's really admirable. Spoiler alert. So fast forward two and a half years. I've been dating my boyfriend for about a year now. He is a guy I met at work who shot his shot. We love it. He's lovely and sweet and patient. I love those adjectives. But Friday night, he told me he was going to dinner with a friend of his, a woman who he has known for over a decade who they did have a past together. I haven't met her, but I trust him. I said, oh my God, have the best time. I know she means a lot and you haven't seen her in a while. This woman who has been like cheated on, left by her husband, has all the reason in the world to be triggered by this and re-traumatized and and use that as an excuse. And she still was like, go, you do you. And he had a history with this woman. (laughs) I feel so mad. I know. And she's being so cool. I know. He then told me they were going to this place called Olivia's in Hoboken. If you think I didn't Google image this. This is a low lit romantic (laughs) restaurant with live jazz music on a Friday night that makes it very loud. It's pretty pricey. For perspective, we went there for Valentine's Day. Yeah. But we don't go there except for special occasions because he doesn't want to spend that much for dinner. <laughs> getting really mad, you guys. While he was at dinner, I took myself on a date by myself a few blocks away at a bar. He said they'd meet me for drinks after dinner. So this is cute. She's like, I want to meet this woman if she's like a big part of your life and I'm going to go down the street. Nearly four hours later, my boyfriend showed up at the bar without the girl saying that she would love to meet me one-on-one sometime. So four hours and she couldn't walk three blocks to meet me. The girl whose boyfriend every year you just had dinner with, I found the restaurant choice and the fact that she wouldn't meet me to be disrespectful. But he said, I promise you nothing happened, which I'm hoping she just asked him. He wasn't right, like, right, right away, nothing happened. Right. It's like, uh, I, I never said anything. He's happened. got lipstick on his collar. Right. You know? Friday night, I added her to Instagram and messaged her that I was sad we didn't get to meet, but would love to meet her sometime soon and invited her to my annual St. Patrick's Day party. It's now Wednesday. She's yet to respond to my message or accept my friend request. Mind you, she works in digital advertising. She should be on social media. Should I be more concerned that something may have happened? And should I be even more pissed that she won't accept my olive branch? Seriously, any advice would help. So I'll just go through the, with the update so we can unpack it all together. Yeah. So I just said, like, thanks for writing in. If we discuss this in the podcast, you know, do you have any updates? And she was just like, oh my God, thank you so much. I'd love for you to talk about the podcast. I love you guys. Oh, she's so cute. Okay. She said, I still haven't met the friend. It took her nine days to accept my friend request on Instagram. And she made up the mm-hmm. excuse. She never checks social. Suspicious since it's her career. I love that. He is adamant that nothing has or ever will happen with her. But my gut keeps saying if she showed him any interest, he would go with it. I want to trust him, but something is pulling me to question it still. Also, fun fact, I just learned that she lives in the same apartment complex as my boyfriend which begs the question, do they hang out more 
that I'm aware of and why haven't we met? If she lives in the complex, I should have met her by now. I don't want to end it with him because I have a hard time trusting and the idea of getting back out in the dating world just sounds miserable, but I don't know. I want him to make it a priority to introduce me to her soon. I feel like looking her in the eyes will solidify what is going on or not going on. If you talk about this on the pod, I will die. The GG communities would help me heal through my divorce and my single year before dating again. I owe a lot of my confidence I found in myself to the advice given in your pod. Thank you to her. That was really sweet. I love her so much. I just hope she has a good life. I'm emotional about this because she's like really struggling. He hasn't done anything outright, but she has this gut feeling. And I understand her being like, if I can just look her in the eyes, like I'll know. I'll like know. we always totally. know. Huh? Or if that girl can just look at me, she'll know that like this is a bad thing to do. What you're doing. Like, I really feel for her because this is the kind of situation, especially when I was younger, that like once I ran, I c- couldn't like unring the bell. Like, mm-hmm. it would eat at me and I would like keep asking questions. It would become almost like a self fulfilling prophecy for me because I'm mm-hmm. just like, wait, now what do you mean you live in the same building and I just right. found this out? Right. Like, that's that's a really weird thing to withhold for me. Like, you guys live in the same building. You had to go out to dinner at this really fancy restaurant. And I don't think that like all these things strung together equals a cheater necessarily. I think that like opportunity is there for sure, but he is sharing it with you. I mean, he told you where you went to dinner and he's open about it. All of these things strung together equal a real reason to be concerned. She is not I agree. overreacting. Like when you really run the tape on them having a history, the restaurant choice, I'm very bothered by the restaurant choice. I'm super bothered I'm by it. really will not let it go. <laughs> Like, I'm thinking of where my boyfriend and I have had romantic dinners. Like, not that everywhere is sacred, but like the special place that we did Valentine's dinner and we don't go that much because it's expensive. Like, why are you going there with anyone but me? I don't know what the point of this is. It's New York City. There's 50 other restaurants on that block. Well, Tobo can be, yeah. You guys know what I mean. You know what I mean. You get it. There's a ton of he restaurants in Hoboken. To thousands of restaurants in Hoboken's great. Like you could also go to New York City. It just it feels like what was the point of that? Why did why did you go here? Did she say she suggested it though? She said it was her restaurant recommendation. That is the only loophole in the case. No, and there's nothing about that. No, she said I found the restaurant choice and the fact that she wouldn't meet me to be disrespectful. Oh, I thought she meant I'm the one that found this restaurant no, choice. The sentence is accurate. I found the restaurant choice and the fact that she wouldn't meet me. Yeah, like Yeah, it's crazy. I wouldn't like it at all. What is the point of this? We don't go here because it's too expensive. It's not even like, not even like how romantic it is because I guess romance is a little subjective. Like you could say any low yeah. lit bar with like low ceilings is romantic, but the price point, I'm like, what? why are we, why are we doing this? She sounds like an intelligent woman who is like cataloging all of these little things. And I just don't like what I'm hearing. And I'd really need to like know everything about the relationship to know if he is somebody that's really trustworthy, that's making her feel secure because all of these things are really raising my red flags and I, I don't like it. I mean, well, what would you do? I, I know. It's hard for me to like put myself in that position. Like as you get older, people just act better. I mean, it just is yeah. what it is. Oh, not Andrew Huberman, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. There's... <laughs> not everybody. There is one paragraph in that article. Ugh. It was just like, he said that all these women are crazy and stalkers and making all these stuff because they're fame fuckers. And I'm like, is this about a 20 year old or a 50 year old brilliant famous neuroscientist? That's so crazy. <laughs> Anyways, so, so yeah, some people get better with age, thing. not him. Yeah. But do you know how old she is? At no age is this okay. But like, well, I mean, she was married for six years. I mean, I guess there was a world in which she got married at 18, but I mean, she's probably at least 30, I was thinking. I'm I'm trying to put myself in this position and think like, how would I feel and how would I address it? And like, I think I could have one to two very rational conversations about it. Yeah. Of like, you sort of withheld this information that she lives there. Mm -hmm. Like, this just feels, I'm just letting you know it feels weird. I'm just letting you know. I don't don't know what I expect you to do about it. I don't know like how Mm -hmm. the volume that they're communicating with each other. I really like to give the advice of trust your gut, knowing that your gut can be wrong every once in a while. But I don't know. I think I want her to just keep all this in mind and trust your gut and don't be so scared to get back out there. Like, don't hold on to this guy and ignore red flags because you don't want to get back out into the dating world and you think you found a good one. You know, it's only been, what, six months of dating. You know, like, it's not too late. You've Mm -hmm. been through too much 
to be with somebody who was going to do something shady. You know, you were in this marriage that fell apart and then her ex cheated on her with the professor. And it's just like, you need someone you can trust fully. Like that should be your bar. And Especially for her, yes. Yeah. She needs somebody that's really going to make her feel safe. And there are people out there that are like that. And I am not in the camp of 100%. He's definitely cheating. It's just no, like, no, no, no. it's behavior that is not respectful of me in our relationship. And I don't like it. Well, her feeling is that like he would take it if it was offered to him, which you don't want that either. A really bad feeling. I'm really fortunate to not have felt like that with exes that like I've had relationships with that had like female friends. And like mm -hmm. once I start to feel like that, I can't like unfeel it. Mm -hmm. Like when I look back, the people that I thought I couldn't trust were people that I couldn't trust. You know what I don't like? What? Her <laughs> saying, tell her we'll meet one on one sometime. Like, they can't all be together because then she'll pick up on the vibes. That's you know weird. what I mean? It's like, really why couldn't weird. she walk down the street and say hello? Because that concerns me too, that it's she only wants to do a one-on-one -on -one because she's like, she'll pick up on our vibes. I'm sorry. I feel so bad if I'm putting this into this girl's head. We don't know for sure. No, it's weird to me. And listen, even she just gave like, us the information. Like you're talking like single girls versus girls in relationships. As a single girl, I guess I am almost like hyper aware sometimes of like, yes, I do want to meet her. I don't want somebody's significant other to be threatened by me. And it's important to me that I like become friends with my guy friends, significant others, because I want us all to be friends. Like I'm friends with all my guy friends' wives and I want to text with them and send them jokes. And I love that she reached out. Like I would say if you're really uncomfortable with a significant other's friend, I would reach out to that person and just play dumb a little and try to be friendly and like see how it is. I mean, to me though, I'm like the partner has the responsibility to be the connector here. Sure. Like, you know, I'm just thinking again, like I'm in a relationship that I feel hundred percent secure a hundred percent of the time. If I had some friend, male or female, I wanted to meet, I'd, I'd be like, Hey, set this up. And he would do it. Right. I wouldn't have to go around him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I don't like that either. Me, I'm sneaky. I would be doing it because right, I'm right, being right. a dick. But I think she actually had really good intentions at first. And she was like, oh, this is a person who's important to my significant other and I want to meet them. I mean, I'm saying, oh, what unit does she live in? Buzz, buzz. It's me, bitch. <laughs> You can't ignore me. I'm knocking on your door. She's over there at the apartment complex oh, no. anyway. I'm going to go say hello. It's about to be summer. Is there a pool? I'm not leaving that apartment complex <laughs> till I've met her. I will wait at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> Best of luck. Keep us updated, sis. And we feel for you and we're on your team wholeheartedly. One hundo P. Which she said was so sweet. I just love you guys so much. I know. Can't wait to be on tour. I miss you all so much. Okay, we'll wrap up with this email. My ex and I were in a long distance relationship in college as he was starting physician's assistant school and I was still finishing my undergraduate multiple states away from one another. They were finally starting some practicums where they were learning how to do different procedures slash tests, et cetera, and were on their primary care unit learning how to do annual physicals. Obviously, in this unit, they learn how to do these exams on both men and women. And with that being said, knowing the nature of what he was in school to become, I knew this was a unit they were going to ultimately come across. It was a little weird to think about it in the beginning because it seems intimate, but I was able to get over it that on their actual quote unquote patients, they had to come into the clinic for them to learn on. Now where the fight comes in. He told me he and his quote unquote classmate, but if I had to think it was probably only this one specific female classmate of his, were going to be quote unquote, practicing on one another. I very clearly expressed that I was uncomfortable with him doing this with a classmate and I was met with, you're hindering my education and you're just being insecure in our relationship. And I also want it to be known that at that point in time, the specialty that interested him the least was primary care, dot, dot, dot. I mean, okay, they're young, right? If they're on like a college, traditional track of, yeah, undergrad and, you Long know, distance and going college. to yeah. normal age college. So there is that. You really let go of a lot of these type of things as you get older. Again, oh, I always don't want to sound condescending. I'm speaking from past experience. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. Like we asked our friend who's <laughs> dating a doctor who's about to start his residencies. And she just didn't agree with like the Being weirdness about and the jealousy about it. You know, it's just like part of the job. So it does make you wonder if there's other stuff going on that – is making her not trust him because it's it's like what you gotta gotta do, and I I need to know if it's normal to like play doctor with your classmates. <laughs> like, is that normal? Like, I feel like it has to be right. Like, he's not like he's a mechanic and he's playing doctor with his classmates. <laughs> Like, you gotta practice on somebody. I mean, it just, it feels like it's all in the name of professionalism. I don't know. Like, I mean, she's saying, like, this is not really what he wants to do. But that changes, too. Like, you can't hold that against somebody. Like, if they've changed their course 
in medicine. That can change day to day. I just want to say that. Like, this is a school assignment. They didn't come up with this on their own at home. He wasn't like, I was with Jennifer playing doctor. Don't be such a baby about it. She just showed me her pussy for medical reasons. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, he never had any interest in gynecology. And he's like, well, actually, Jennifer wants me to he, delve into gynecology. So he wanted me to taste it to see if it was normal. <laughs> Does this taste normal to you? <laughs> we just thought this one was like so ridiculous. I mean, I wonder if she thinks he's lying. You know, I wonder if she, but like, what, why would he lie he's about not that? He's med school. He's actually, he's, <laughs> he's a mechanic, he's actually. A dentist. <laughs> so, but here's the thing. Like, if this is normal, we should ask our friend's boyfriend. I mean, but I think it's like a study somebody? group. Yeah, I think you're, it's like having a study group. It just so happens to be like bodies that you're studying. But I do think she can't really get mad. Like, what's the alternative? She's going to be like, no, you can't do this with your classmates. So go find other strangers. The open range. Just practice on patients. A cadaver. I mean, I'm sure they do that too. (laughs) They start on mannequins and make their way to cadavers and then it's classmates and then it's real patients. Anyone listening? I mean, I don't know either, but they're probably like, oh my God. If I have a doctor doing stuff to me. (laughs) Is that real? I made that up. But like when you're in esthetician school, you practice on mannequins. I feel like now there's probably like interactive software and like AI stuff that you probably practice on. You don't have to do it with a person now. I don't know all the ins and outs. If this is something that's going on, this is totally normal. And she's like, I don't feel comfortable. And he's like, well, you're kind of hindering my education. He's not wrong. I mean, what's the alternative? He switches professions. Like, it just kind of seems like it is going to be what it is. And you're entitled to feel uncomfortable, by the way. Like, it would still make me a little uncomfortable to know that like my man went to work every day and was just putting his hands all over women's bodies. But like... He's going to do that professionally for the rest of your lives. And he sounds like he's going to be rich. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you know, they're long distance, which is tough, too. I mean, we did a whole episode on long distance relationships a couple weeks ago. If you guys can go back and listen. I mean, a lot of people do have trust issues when it comes to them. And especially if you are younger and it's just a kind of this is sort of one of those things. I guess you can feel a little uncomfortable, but like he hasn't done anything to prove he's not trustworthy. Like he's just at school, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So uh, you could choose to not date somebody like that and be like, I'm not comfortable with you touching women's bodies until the end of time. Well, it's like dating an actor. Totally. They might be doing sex scenes or kissing or whatever for work. For work. Take it or leave it. Being I'm going to leave it. Being a male actor is, I mean, you just get off on a loophole every single time. <laughs> oh, I just had to fuck her. Just, just for work. Just <laughs> Not for me. This is fun. Yeah. I liked your list earlier. You were asking me questions. That was fun. <laughs> I love reading to you. Okay. Well, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. Hope you're enjoying the new studio. <sighs> Let, as let well us know here. in the He's comments the on time. YouTube. Nice stuff only, hopefully. <laughs> and girlsgottoeat.com to get the tickets for the No Crumbs Tour 2024. Girls Gotta Eat podcast. And, of course, get the merch. We dropped the new merch for the tour. And that's all going to be, like I said, at girlsgottoeat.com. Girls Gotta Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I am Ash Hess. Raina is Raina.Greenberg. And our other company, Vibes Only, vibesonly.com. And subscribe on YouTube. Share this episode with a friend and we'll see you next week have a good week guys bye